name is Christian Aldo, and I'm traveling along with Admiral Byrd's Expeditionary Force. We've traveled all the way to Antarctica to see if the rumors are true about secret Nazi bases and mysterious Nazi flying saucers. Sound exciting? Let's go and explore. Fire! explain myself. I'm here with the U.S. Mountain Division and we're making our way up this mountain and we it looks like the the rumors are true there is a secret Nazi base. Yeah, let's uh let's go in on it you can see it. So from what I can see from here that's uh, like some sort of underground base and uh, there seems to be a generator over here off to the right. And there's a, an, obviously it's a radar station. You can see there's some anti-aircraft on there. And uh, that looks like a snow camouflage E-100 tank destroyer. Those look to me like elite German winter paratroopers. I think we're gonna need to take a closer look at them. So this is a brand new set of German winter paratroopers Eastern Front, made by Mars. And so the first figure is a commander with binoculars, and uh, he's holding an MP40 submachine gun. Uh, let's give you a little tour around these, these uh, paratroopers. Uh, they're all wearing uh, the quilted, the, the diamond-shaped quilted winter uniforms, which are really fantastic. And look, they look very Star Wars. They look like they would have been used in The Empire Strikes Back. That's what I love about them. And these particular outfits were used in the Eastern Front, fighting in the Ukraine, etc. And so this figure is looking through some binoculars. And this figure here, he has a, a signal pistol. So he would fire in the air to signal for the troops to advance. And strapped to his back, he is wearing a radio with his uh, little antenna. It's a great little antenna they put in there. And um, he has the regular gear that a paratrooper would be wearing with the bread bags and, and canteen. And uh, they have their helmets strapped to their back. Poses three and four. This first figure is standing sharp shooting an STG-44 assault rifle. And the second figure is standing firing an MG-42 heavy machine gun. And they're both wearing their uh, painted winter helmets and, of course, their quilted winter uniforms. Poses five and six. This figure is firing a Guir German rifle from mid-chest. And this figure is firing a Panzer Schreck anti-tank weapon. And um, it, it, was, it was the German equivalent of the bazooka. And as we turn these figures around, uh, you'll notice that this, uh, this particular pose also has a Panzer, a Panzer, Panzer Faust strapped to his back. Again, two more fantastic poses. Poses number seven and eight. Both of these figures are wearing... Uh, camouflage parkas with the with the green camouflage color turned on the outside and um, figure number seven is running with his rifle and figure number eight is standing sharpshooting his FG42 which was an assault rifle that was made specifically for the, the false Falsham Jager divisions which is a means German paratrooper divisions So there you go. Here are all the poses, all eight poses of Mars 132 scale German Winter Paratroopers Eastern Front. And I have to say, Mars, this is the best sculpted set you've ever made. This is, the be this is your best and coolest set to date. 
Um, this is as Star Wars as World War II could ever get. I highly, highly recommend and love this set of figures. Uh, 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 there they are. There they are. If you look closely down the side of the mountain, you can see the U.S. Mountain Division. They're, they're creeping up. They're creeping up the cliffs. Let's just hope that no German sentries see them on the way up. Because if they do, the Nazis will set an alarm and this whole mission will be a disaster. Now this next set I want to discuss and to unveil to you is a set that was created by Forces of Valor back in the 2000s. Now this set was of some US paratroopers, but the sculpting was so bad and they were so bulky and chunky, I was going to throw them out of my collection. You know the ones, I'll post a picture of them. The, the set was so bad, I was going to kick it out of my collection. But before I threw them away, or gave them away, I decided, wait a minute here. They do look bulky enough where I could make them into winter troops, and I know there were uh, U.S. Mountain Divisions in Italy, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to whittle them down, and I'm going to make conversions that actually work. And so here we are with the first two poses. So we have a figure standing, sharpshooting a rifle, and here we have a figure firing a Browning machine gun. And um, on their backs, I glued backpacks and, um, and rope, and, um, and I painted their outfits, uh, their smocks white, and their helmets white. Poses three and four. Um, normally this figure just would have been a paratrooper waving back for the troops, but, uh, now I'm having him, uh, holding onto the rope of a pack mule. And so I just took a rubber mule and, and glued a lot of the, that, those extra, uh, backpacks and, and uh, ammunition boxes to his back. And then this figure here was on a, a communications, he had a communications device on his, on his back and talking on a, on a phone. And so those figures worked out well. You can do this at home too, kids. Poses five and six, standing sharpshooting a Thompson and kneeling sharpshooting a Thompson with backpacks and camo smocks and, and rope and gear. So I just basically used up every figure I had and I just kept changing them. The different configurations that you can put together are endless. You can make 50 poses of them if you wish. Just interchange their arms and just make sure you use something like Maxi Cure Super Glue. Now, I got a couple bonus figures here. The two final bonus figures were actually made by Marks. Uh, they were made sometime back in probably the late 60s. Um, let's say mid 60s, maybe even though, maybe even 1960. Uh, they they were from um, they were from an Arctic adventure playset. So I just did them up like uh, U.S. soldiers, and I and I super glued all the uh, the gear, the American gear and weapons and supplies onto their bodies. So that makes them into U.S. Mountain Troops. So here is the U.S. Mountain Division. They were originally forces of valor, U.S. paratroopers that were subpar, but this is what you can do with them. I highly recommend it. Are you guys ready for this? Enter the German Waffentrager E100 Super Tank Destroyer. Super Heavy Tank Destroyer. Now, this is a 135th scale kit, but kitties, it's gigantic. So it'll fit in with your 132 beautifully. Now, this was the final version of the E100, and it was armed with a gigantic, the gun goes from here to here. This is called a taper bore gun. That means the gun sort of tapers down as it gets to the end, so it shoots out like a pea shooter. It could destroy something from maybe five to six kilometers away. It could take out any tank and go right through it. It is gigantic, it's, it's ridiculous. It's as big as the mouse. But this one was a tank destroyer version without a turret. So it had this superstructure uh, on the back. Now, this is made by Amusing Hobbies, and I absolutely loved putting this together. It was so exciting. Now, let's get really exciting. Let's show you underneath the hood. Now, this is the, uh, the fighting compartment. Now, let's light this up for you guys. 
That's what it looks like on the inside. Get in nice and close. Get in there. So there's the breach, the gigantic breach. And uh, this is a Forces of Valor figure for scale to give you an idea. Look how proud he is hanging out here in his E100. Get, get really deep in there. Look at that. Fire! Wow. This thing is so epic. Let's just put a figure up here and he can stand here proudly. This would be, the ammunition would have been absolutely gigantic. Actually, now let me show you how insane this is. This is a shell from an 88. Oh, that's a shell from an 88. That's for a King Tiger. This would be the shell for this weapon. Isn't that crazy? Look how big a man would stand com in comparison to it, holding on to it. So here it is, the 135th scale E100 Waffentragen. The Waffentragen Taper Bore E100, 135th scale by Amusing Hobbies. That's all I have to say about that. Uh oh, the alarm has been set. Okay, it looks like uh, we're in trouble here. I, we better, I, I'm gonna circle around to the front of the mountain to see the front of the base um, so I can radio in to the B-29s. So uh, come on, follow me. mining in this base anyway oh look this is what they're hiding mydogtag.com um authentic world war ii dog tags um and they can be customized to your personal needs uh just mention uh plastic general and uh you'll get 15 percent off that's what they've been hiding up there in that base so i've snuck around to the front of the mountain Let's see if the rumors are true. Oh my God. Is that who I think it is? God, the intelligence reports are true. The Germans have advanced saucer craft. I better call into Admiral Byrd to report this. I'll bet you didn't think that German UFOs existed, did you? Well, here's proof they did. About six years ago, signal models came out with the World War II German UFO officially named in conspiracy circles the Hanabu 2. So here it is. Technically, this kit was made in, in 148th scale. But um, I need it 132 scale, so I made some adjustments. Also on the bottom, um, it had much longer guns. They, they, these are the gun turrets on the bottom. And they were really long, but all of the photographs I've seen, the, the alleged photographs I've seen of this... Uh, of this saucer craft, never had the guns on the bottom really long. And this also 
has a landing gear that uh, the four landing gear struts and they all fit in there so you can have it on the ground like this in a docking in a, in a, in a bay in a landing bay or a hangar bay and um, but let's have some fun with you oh they also put this ridiculously long gun on the top the plastic general will have none of this so what I end up doing come on in a little bit closer uh, the top rotates if you needed to so and the top lifts off and then what I did is I reconstructed the interior so that it could accommodate uh, seated figures. So you have them here working at the, uh, the control panels, flying the saucer craft. Then maybe you have another guy uh, working on, on this um, anti-gravity propulsion unit. And um, this, this, is, um, this, is, this would be a smaller version of the rumored bell anti-gravity device also uh it was the propulsion or the theory of anti-gravity was something called vril now i have a very important artifact to show you these are the keys for the ufo this is the symbol of vril of um of secret anti anti-gravity technology vril technology is was the propulsion unit for the saucer craft and then this fits on nicely and I didn't put any of my um, decals on this craft but uh, you could do what you want with your Hanabutu by Signal Models uh, the come in Admiral Bird yes I um, I've seen I, I know where the base is the coordinates are uh, 20 degrees north 30 degrees south 18 degrees east and 19 degrees west yeah, so what, when do you think you could be here? This is Captain Phillips of the B-29 Squadron. What? I can't hear you. The atomic bombs are on their way. We will what? arrive at location. What? In T-minus two minutes. What? You, Over and out. How, how long? What? Oh, okay, so that's all for today. If you liked the episode, please hit the subscription button and uh, hit the little bell so that we can always notify you future episodes. Uh, if you have any comments about historical inaccuracies, you have any requests or anything, please be sure to write in. Uh, my name is Christian Aldo. This is the Plastic General. Long live 132 World War II. Ah, ah.